Humans live in a rather peculiar situation. On the one hand, there are something like 190 different countries, often very fiercely independent. On the other hand, the world's becoming economically integrated. So for example, your computer may be designed in the United States, but the hardware will come from China, the software from India, and maybe the hard drive from Singapore. The oil that fuels your car or the petrol may come from Venezuela, perhaps from Saudi Arabia or Iran. So if the world is becoming globally one, how is it that there are so many different national flags and different armies, often hostile to each other? Young people everywhere are being indoctrinated with nationalism. History is taught in such a way that one's own nation is seen as heroic and always in the right, while other nations are seen as inferior or as enemies. Now, if you think about this, it's all pretty senseless. No one of us has chosen his parents and no one of us has chosen the country in which he or she has been born. A person born in Brazil could have equally well been born in Argentina. A person born in Pakistan could have been born in India. These are things that we have no control over. So then the question is, what explains the enormous feelings of nationalism that you see when there's a cricket match or a hockey match or when there is a war between countries? The fact is, that although our science belongs to the space age, our politics comes from the stone age. Thousands of years ago, there were just small hunting groups like this one. Humans and animals always act so that they maximize the chances of their own survival. But humans soon discovered that an individual is very vulnerable and so working together greatly increases the chances of survival. The groups became bigger and bigger, and that's how tribes were formed. Now, the members of a tribe are very much integrated with each other. They only marry amongst themselves. They will always support a person from their own tribe. And if one person from their tribe is hurt or killed by somebody from another tribe, doesn't matter what the reason is, they will declare war on the other tribe. That tribalism persists today in many parts of the world in its raw form. But over the centuries, tribalism has slowly gone away. The reason is told to us by anthropologists, by historians. Military conquests created empires. The head of the empire was usually an emperor or a sultan or a king or whatever. And he belonged to the dominant ruling group of that time. And so there was a forced integration. Empires have existed throughout history. But with technology, there came about a massive change. Now with the making of ships, you had maritime empires. You had the Portuguese, the British, the French, and they were able to conquer large parts of the world. The king, sultan, and emperor were eventually replaced by national leaders. And you particularly have this phenomenon in Europe, where you had national leaders who, through populist rhetoric, rose high and they completely changed the character of their states. So in Italy, you had Garibaldi. In France, there was Napoleon. In Germany, there was Bismarck. Whereas it is a good thing that the emperors, the kings and the sultans were displaced and replaced by popular leaders. But this also had tragic consequences for the people everywhere. In Europe, where nationalism was the strongest, we saw the First World War something like 20 million people or more died. Chemical weapons were used. But then there was a greater horror that came with the Second World War as Hitler rose to power and sought to conquer first Europe 
and then the rest of the world. He relied upon German nationalism. He rallied the people with the cause of German superiority. Nationalism has also been fueled by religious differences. And the consequences of that we saw particularly in the war between Iraq and Iran, where the two countries launched missiles at each other's cities, they used chemical weapons, they slaughtered one million people. Religious nationalism has also affected Pakistan and India. We have had four wars against each other, bombed each other's cities, Militarization takes away from the needs of our people. Money is spent upon defense rather than upon alleviating poverty or giving jobs. And worst of all, young people are taught that people who live on the other side of the border are your enemies. Noam Chomsky has something very profound to say on this. Jingoism, racism, fear, religious fundamentalism, these are ways of appealing to people if you're trying to organize a mass base of support for policies that are actually designed to crush them. Of course, things are not totally bleak. Humans have this enormous capacity to learn. And I'd say that Europe has learned faster, perhaps because of its history, than anybody else. Today, the European Union offers a vision of the future. Consider the fact that Germany and France were at war with each other, had bombed each other, killed each other's people. But today you can drive from Germany to France. You don't need a visa. You don't have to show a passport. Now that is, to my mind, civilized behavior. That's the way to go for the rest of the world. Imagine the world as it could be if we were to follow that example, if we were to turn swords into plowshares, if we were to eliminate national borders. Shouldn't that be every thinking human being's dream?